A warm welcome to this post discussion about the future of sustainable buildings and societies. We have now a new panel that will take a little bit wider discussion on uh, the future of a building and especially fairs and wood buildings, I would presume. I'd like to introduce the uh, panel and we have next to me Niklas Andersson, you're the founder of the prefab wood uh, construction company Sizes and the development company named I Am Home. Welcome. Lovely to be here, thank you. Welcome. And the next in the middle we have Linda Kamara, director of operations and architect at the Tengboom uh, firm. Welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, in front of me we have uh, Kistel uh, Larsson, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Ancelot Larsson, the Vice Chancellor at the Linnaeus University. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to start out with a few introduction questions to each of you and then we go on with more of a dialogue. Uh, Niklas, um, I thought of uh, starting with you next to me here. Uh, there's a number of wood construction companies in Sweden, but you still uh, went into this industry and added one more. What's the reason for that? Well, uh, it, there are a number of uh, producers on, on the prefabricated side. Still, there's way too few producers on that side. We, it started from the perspective of, of the developing company, I Am Home, as a need for this type of product. Speedy, well-priced uh, quality. Uh, we couldn't find it really. Uh, because of, I suppose, a supply-demand discussion between uh, clients and producers. So you find a uh, gap in the market? We found it, uh, and I think there's still room in that gap for, for more. And, and uh, it would be a great uh, advantage if there were more, because I think there's a lot of things in, 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 uh, in the system that needs to shift. Good. My, my next question would be more like, uh, I, I've been following this industry for some years and in an international co um, uh, survey, the, the Swedish industry came quite well out uh, being in the top notch uh, delivering uh, development and, and high quality products. Do you still think Swedish colleagues uh, like you and the others are, are uh, good in competing in, in the international arena? It's a question that demands some uh, humbleness, of course, uh, and it is difficult to point out as to where the expertise is, but what is clear is that expertise needs doing rather than the theoretical works which we see all around the world and a, a lot of thinking, a lot of wanting, but not so much doing, which I think sort of the northern uh, Europe does well. So, Good. in a way, yes. In a way, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the last reflection I'd like you to, to address is, uh, what do you think, in general, of uh, some kind of housing fair, study visits, etc., for, for showing a new product? Uh, what's the, the take from the construction business uh, and, and your wood prefab uh, industry? Uh, w what's the need for that, for, would you say? I, th I think it's a good uh, spot for, for pushing uh, companies in general forward to push their own boundaries in order to sort of, I guess, show off in a way. But it also um, makes the people who are presumable clients uh, see the benefits, see the quality on a broader scale. So there's many benefits to, to such a, a scene, such a setting for uh, displays, I guess. Learning uh, from what you do yourself and learning as a presumable client or a uh, resident or so sort of taking away the thresholds. Good, good, good. We will get into more aspects of, of the fair, so we'll be back in that aspect. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, I'd like to move over to, to you and see, you've been uh, in the, so to say, smart housing family for quite some years. What was your initial reaction and thoughts when the, the, when the smart housing came on the arena some years ago? Uh, that it was really needed. Uh, I'm an architect and had uh, been looking into the prefabrication industry for a long time, but uh, not really dared to go in there. And I wasn't really welcome as an architect either. The prefabrication industry thought that our clients want something that is cheap, 
that goes really fast to build and is temporary, then we don't need architects. And they really didn't. So we needed smart housing to change that view, both from the client side, from the architect side, and the, from the prefabricated industry. Uh, and, and maybe an add-on question to what you just just said. Uh, what, what, how the relation have been developing from the very first years and, and up until now? What, what, what's your picture and, and, and your drawings? I, I would say it's, it's very much changed. Uh, one thing is that we had a lot of workshops in the beginning, working together and we learned to know each other. And I mean, I don't know everyone in the prefabrication industry there are a lot of people and they don't know every every architect but have you met one and started to understand there is more behind than you understand it's more behind in the whole business and i think that has developed and i now you see in sweden we have had, we have still a lot of requirements for more residential buildings and it has to go faster than it does and then we have this need and as Nicola says there are too few and we also have a need to do it beautiful and sustainable so that requires that we all have to develop the prefabrication industry have to develop to do it more sustainable more beautiful more um, adjusted to the context where it's built and we as architects uh, has to learn how to work in a better way with the prefabricated industry thank you and and uh, we're returning to the aspect of uh, upcoming different kind of housing fair what do you think that could contribute to the built environment what what could that be a, a, a driving force together what what kind of uh, change in the market uh, but i think those questions that i asked uh, raised like how how do the prefabrication industry learn to to adjust to the context and to decide better how do architects really learn to draw for prefabrication because we don't do that still uh, and then if we have those uh, fairs or any other event where we all are forced to do a little bit better then we will learn and take it back to our daily business and be a little bit better so i hope it is like for for a lot of areas competitions and shows you have to do a better thing you learn and then your whole step by step you're yeah. going that direction thank you so far linda you'll be back uh Ann-Charlotte Larsson from the Linnaeus University uh, I'm a little bit curious uh, what role do you think uh, your university could take uh, uh, in general talking about the the, the built environment well Universities are centered around research and education. And with all the students that pass our educations, um, they are a very good driving force because we can give them a portfolio of updated knowledges that they can bring to the industry. And we have educations in built environment, uh, building technology, manufacturing, business models, uh, design, well, we're more or less all over and w then working very closely together with the companies also when it's a question of the research areas that makes us work on real life problems that are relevant for the industry and that then also turns this wheel one more time together. So for example, I can mention um, the, the doctoral schools that we've had where our doctoral students have been employed at the companies, working together with the researchers in the university and also working with outside other outside partners and with themselves, covering a lot of different areas. I think that is a very good example of collaboration. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'm thinking you have also uh, been within the smart housing family for quite some years. What would you say is the, the superpower or strength over the years that have been contributing to development uh, in this uh, built environment? Well, a very short answer is that we have been working with, with open innovation and like working very openly together, as Linda mentioned, uh, bringing in different uh, disciplines and uh, different experiences and then working with that very openly and very sharing. Uh, so I think that that is unique from a university perspective where you would sometimes put yourself aside from society while this way we work with society to create a better future. 
Thank you. Uh, my last question to you in, in this phase could be more uh, fair to me. It's not really an uh, academic aspect. It's more of a commercial or, or, or other aspects. But what's the take? What's interesting for the university within a fair setup? Well, think of the opportunity of being able to take your research out into uh, like a living lab where you could either confirm or confront uh, your theories and, and your findings. And that possibility, I think, would be very interesting to, to most researchers where you can actually see your work in public. We'll probably get back and, and, and see, see more aspects to, to your answer. Thank you so far. Uh, we move on to the areas where we look in more to the keywords within the new European Bauhaus. And the one I'd like to start out with is the keyword of beautiful. And I uh, lean towards you, Niklas, and, and say, wh why do you think beautiful could be important uh, within the fair that will be arranged in the future? What, what's your take on that? I, I think... Beautiful in, in uh, a perspective of uh, building a city is always important. It's, it's kind of a foundation. I mean, look at the cities that we appreciate. It is the beautiful cities that are appreciated, visited, etc., etc. Um, so it is important to keep that in mind uh, as a starting point. I think it's really important as well to uh, shift the mindset from either or, beautiful or productive. Uh, there is no such, uh, this, th there's no conflict between the two. There can be if you make it, but definitely does not have to be a conflict between the two. They can rather work in unison. Uh, I think there is, I mean, from where I come from, there is beauty in productivity, uh, of course, but that's not the kind of beauty we're talking about here. I know this. Um, but marry them uh, and you get a better result. Okay because uh, economic uh, sustainability, uh, social sustainability does not allow for beauty at a supreme cost. Yeah, yeah. You need to have both. Yeah, bring them together. Uh, short comments, reflections. Linda, what do, you, what do you say about beauty's importance? I'm an architect. It's really, <laughs> really important with, uh, to think of what is beautiful. Now, uh, it's often especially in Sweden, not so highly estimated with the, the, with the beauty. Mm. And I think that is a mistake we often do. Mm. Uh, we uh, undervaluate it and uh, then we... That has a cost. I mean, people have always been looking for beautiful and make beautiful things, searching for beauty. I think it's really important. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure a lot of what, and there what's is it? no universal way of us all appreciating the same kind of beautiful. Beautiful will be different for all of us, I think. But being attractive, uh, making uh, an attractive place to live is adding to our quality of life. And then it becomes more sustainable because we would like to stay there. Mm. And we don't have to change it all the time. Thank you. And, and we move on to, to another aspect, uh, men mentioning in just about, uh, you could describe beauty also with, with aspects like in, in, in society, nature and, and, and part of life. Uh, how, how could that be implement, implemented in, in the fairs with this wider scope than the building itself to, to, to broaden the aspect of, of beauty? Uh, Linda, what's your, your uh, thoughts of this wider aspect and, so to say, not only the building? But of course, I've been thinking of this a lot. And what Angelot says, it's uh, different. What you think is beautiful is different with different cultures, different ages, different everything. It, it, um, you have different opinion what is beautiful. But I think that if, you, if I do something and really care about something and, and do it with a lot of effort and a lot of energy and I think it's really beautiful when I'm finished. Even if you don't agree that it's, super, it's not your taste, but you will understand someone has done everything to do this good, then you will, you will have the same um, feeling of that someone have taken care and really bothered to do this good. And I think that is the important thing. So I can if I do something that I say someone else will think this is beautiful, that's not good enough. 
And, and uh, Angelot, is there an academic researcher aspect to, to what Linda just said? Well, you can say that together with Växjö municipality, we are more carrying out a survey looking at what people who live in wooden houses appreciate. What do you think is attractive to you? And it's going to be very interesting to see that from, you can say, the physiological perspective rather than the 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 medicine as aspects that you have more daylight or you have uh, a better um, climate indoors. So that we're really looking forward this, to this kind of um, Research results. results. Yeah. yeah, and we appreciate different things. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Niklas, uh, the wider aspect uh, that this fair is, is uh, coming up with and, and uh, reflections to your colleagues. I suppose there's a risk as well in the, in the fair combining beauty where, where everything becomes a beauty contest and beauty stands beside beauty, so to speak. Uh, or at least that's the intention, I guess, from each uh, developer, architect. Um, referring to sort of uh, like a beautiful piece of music, you find the hook. Uh, I think that's... a a key takeaway for for architects working with uh, housing from the point of view where I stand. If you try to make everything uh, stick out, nothing sticks out. Mm -hmm. So you need the hooks to catch your eye. Uh, and, and as long as you do that, you'll find both beauty and, and, the, uh, and the other aspects that we're looking for as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking uh, beauty and, and uh, uh, scientific research, uh, is that a good combination? Is it a natural combination? Uh, how will your colleagues and, and yourself uh, go into to the scientific aspect of beauty? Well, I can make a reflection because I come from the energy side and I mean, we could build uh, a very energy efficient house with you can say very thick walls and very small windows, that will be, um, you can say, a passive house with no added energy. But would somebody like to, to live in it? So you have to, to constantly work in the balance because beauty would be from a scientific point of view, perhaps not the word that we would use, but we would look at the attractiveness. And then you need to have... Uh, a matrix of all different kind of variables and it has to be uh, I mean strong enough and it has to be be um, reliant enough so I think the beauty for a scientist or a researcher probably become comes in this development and the choice in the the route forward and um, my old professor would normally say the beauty is in the simplicity like that, like that. We have, and I'm happy uh, in the chat, uh, the audience have been sending in a first question. And uh, Karina wonders, what can you name? What can you name the most important aspects to remember when it comes to wood buildings in modern houses in cities? Uh, Linda, uh, what's your answer? Once again, the question. Uh, what can you name the most important aspects to remember when it comes to wood buildings in modern houses in cities? Uh, it's like what, what uh, my, my understanding is more what, what's the, the most important aspect in wood building? Is it um, sustainability or, or does it give other design possibilities or... Uh, or Niklas, Niklas, would you like to, to take, take your take it first? Take it first. Then. Uh, I think it's easy uh, to to confuse uh, wood construction if you're not referring to wood facades, which uh, I'm not when I'm talking about wood construction, I'm talking about the framework. Uh, it really is a method of production, apart from also being a sustainable method of pr production for sure. But I mean, it comes down to architecture, what you display for the eye uh, and... and it is a bold statement from, from, from the European Union to put beautiful there because it, it is everything or nothing. Uh, but it is a production method. Uh, it's, it's not really... So, so the question would be, do the house beautiful, functional, uh, fit to the, to the site and build it with wood, concrete or whichever if you're not caring about the sustainability? Mm. Yeah. But if you are, use wood. 
I think when I heard that question, I think of Sweden, of course, and that we for 100 years had forbidden higher buildings in wood. And a big change for us has been that it's you're looking for the function, not looking to the material allowed or not allowed, but what what is the security regulations we need to fulfill. And that's that's a game changer, of course. And I think that could be in much more fields that we look really, what is it that we want to achieve instead of regulate something that with a very locked view uh, makes us uh, too strict in what is possible to do and not giving any possibilities for creativity. Uh, we're mentioning sustainability and I think we uh, move on to, to that uh, target and sustainability is most likely described as economically, uh, ecolog uh, ecologically and, and social aspect, the three of them uh, and uh, the best solution is when you have the three aspects in, in the same solution or product or service, whatever. Um, and uh, maybe, Anshalot, uh, how would you describe uh, sustainability and, and the, their developments as a driving force within a fair? Uh, do you see a scientific aspect to, uh, to uh, sustainability and, and, and a fair setup? Well, technically and ecologically, it's very easy to set up targets for a fair. I mean, you could regulate or you can give uh, targets for energy consumption or heating or whatever. Um, but looking more into the economical, societal um, aspects, it's very interesting because the f in the fair we could also work together with the people who will live in the houses and get their opinions. And I think that that is something that then continue to drive the sustainable development. Mm -hmm. Reflections? I think you said the, the best way is if we have all three aspects. I think there is no other way. Then it's not sustainable. It has to be. It mm -hmm. has to be mm -hmm. all the other ways. I mean, we see a lot now and uh, everything has to go too fast in Sweden in residential areas, for example. We can do them sustainable, ecologically sustainable. We can do them cheap. But if we forget the social sustainability, it will cost a lot of money in a few years mm. uh, for the society. Mm. And that's why we have to think mm. of all the three aspects all the time. Mm. I think in, a, in, in the contest, uh, context of a fair, it's, it's, uh, it would be unthinkable today to, to not point at it as yes. sustainable uh, front line. Mm. I, I think mm. you would be mm. sort of nearly making a fool of yourself. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good shift that this has become sort of a, a need, a, a must-have in order to do spe spectacular things. It's Can a necessity you, yeah, today. You can't work no, without exactly it. Exactly. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, you're on the track, Niklas, I'd like to, to, uh, to, to ask you and, and all of you, uh, a show, uh, a housing show in any kind of way that is upcoming and, and to show the sustainable solutions, uh, could that be a key drive for all kinds of participants or is it just a certain kind of uh, audience that, that would be attracted to sustainable aspects? Uh, I, I think you see that I mentioned the shift and I, I think it's been so clear uh, to see it uh, on a broader scale, maybe just the past something five years or so uh, with financial institutes coming to sustainability rather than keeping a little bit shy of it. Uh, this is driving uh, in, uh, participants in the, in, in the sort of line of business to push their boundaries. Uh, this is also something that happens, uh, of course, in a fair. I mean, the scene that you sort of produce in, in, in a fair uh, setting is, is what, it, what I find to be the, the key point here. It's, uh, it's a perfect situation for... Uh, researched theories to be pushed into production mm. uh, sooner uh, than they otherwise would be. Yeah. They, they would linger, I think, longer if, if this was not the case. So Something like that. A quick reply to that. Mm. Yeah, I see that sometimes when we talk about the housing fairs, it's like the impression you get when you go there. Mm. But it's also the long-term perspectives. Yeah. It's the life cycle assessments. 
and also looking beyond the building in itself, uh, both living in it, but also how they correspond to building a society. So we probably have to add on actions beyond just opening up the buildings for people to come and look. So seminars, lectures, workshops in between. So both the way to the buildings and the, 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 uh, the fair uh, and also afterwards. Yeah, and that, I think that, there is a lot to learn there. That mm-hmm. process, I think, is key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We got a question coming in from uh, the audience, listening and looking at us regarding sustainability. Uh, Anneli, she asks, how does the economy look like for the manufacturers and the individual who live who will live there in the houses within the fair? Uh, what's your expectations, Niklas? <laughs> You were sort of starting uh, the session off with asking why did we go into this. Uh, In my opinion, many producers, many uh, construction uh, companies have made a faulty assumption here. Uh, Or a faulty lobbyism, I don't know. Uh, Where you say, well, if you want sustainable, you're going to have to pay extra. Uh, This is only true if you start from sort of non-sustainable perspective. If you go in at a high sustainable level, this comes with the DNA of a company, a person, whichever, mm. and there is, mm. it doesn't add cost at all. Mm. Uh, we Save s- some costs uh, eventually? W- uh, as, as we see it, I mean, if, if we can build a sustainable with wood inside from a factory, reducing the time spent to do it, keeping the qualities, uh, the price does come down uh, because it's more efficient. Uh, so it, it, there, it, sustainable or not in this case, the, we chose sustainability. Uh, but you can actually leave it out of the question yeah. as long as you sort of keep your goals straight. Good, good. And, and uh, Linda, what's your take on, on the economic aspects when you have a dialogue with customers or, or, or partners? Uh, I mean, it's always uh, site uh, specific. I mean, it's often the site that decides the economy. What can a client here pay or the end client uh, pay for, for the living? And that was, is what we have to adjust to. And, um, and we often hear this and it's a bit sad. It costs the same wherever we build if it's in a really central location in a big city or if it's out in the countryside the only sh- difference in money is the the site in itself or the plot which can be a, a big amount uh, but of course that is a little bit why why uh, many developers want to build in the big cities because they can take out more money from the the market the, the more market. more willing i think we we may say thanks so far for that for that question from anneli and uh, look into another aspect that is very central in the new european bauhaus and have been for many years within smart housing since smart housing have been working very inclusive with the triple uh, helix and even a quadruple helix uh, um, in many aspects and that has been addressed within the new European Bauhaus too. So I I'm, I'm, uh, would like to, together with you, uh, look into to that kind of uh, attitude to work and develop together. Um, uh, Angelot, uh, what can the science improve and develop, develop when uh, being a part of a fair when we're working together? Well, think about the opportunity of checking into the future. I love that concept because it gives us an opportunity of trying out new things. And if I look at the university, we don't have the money to build new houses and and work with those as a living lab. We need to partner. And uh, having that opportunity of partnering with a large, um, both company base and also from developers and from municipalities where this gives a really nice opportunity. So clustering that kind of, you could say different subjects, will be a very interesting research project for the future. So you're on the step to be part of of this together aspect. Thank you, thank you for Uh, that. Building building one house and then uh, changing it, rearranging it, making it even more modern, doing that step by step. Um, Using Nicholas's um, 
production facilities, using Linda's competence, using uh, collaboration with the municipality. There's well, that would together. be interesting. Uh, reflections, Niklas. It's, it's really a together thing yeah. where uh, you, you say that the universities don't have money to build, which is true. Uh, in contrary, uh, the, the, the construction companies, the producers, rarely have money for research. Exactly. So it's mm. a beautiful combination, I think, mm. where you can afford to sort of research something that may or may not have a commercial benefit. We don't know this no. when we start researching. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a beautiful combination, I think. If we know, then if it's know. not research, then yeah, it's just correct. development. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, you've been within the smart housing for some years and, and probably other locations you've been uh, working together with uh, researchers and academia. What, what, what's, uh, what's your take on, on this aspect? But it's totally necessary. Mm. We really need to work together. And it's so easy to say that we work together, but to work together for real, that's something different. And often you really need to have those discussions really deep and to work for a, just to set up the same goal. That can be a hard, <laughs> hard thing to do. Mm. Um, but if you manage, the results is much, much better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We, we have another take on this uh, and I'm uh, asking Niklas, uh, the, the, this together perspective, uh, how does that influence the wooden-based prefab housing industry, uh, the culture and how you develop uh, blocks and houses? Uh, is it uh, more or less of a one company show or is this a together thing already in your industry? I would wish to say that it influences it entirely and in a way it does, but it needs to it needs to involve together. I mean, speaking of architects, producer sort of collaboration, we need to learn each other's realities. We need to learn what drives costs. We were speaking earlier on beauty. Beauty mm. may cost or it may not, mm. but it's misconceptions usually. Mm. Mm. If you look on the other side of sort of the, the business uh, that we run, suppliers, as when we understand each other's r realities, uh, costs vanish. Mm. So it doesn't happen on anyone's uh, account. They vanish. Mm. This, is, this is sort of the key, and I think an industrial uh, foundation, improving, changing, working together, uh, uh, vertical integration commonly called, uh, which can only happen long term. It's a huge structural difference that stands in the way of actual industrial production. Thanks. Uh, ref reflection, Linda, on the together within this industry value chain. Yeah, and I say it again. It's a necess necessity and we really need to do it. And we need to do it better than we do today. And it's both in the traditional business and with the prefabrication industry. Uh, because there are so many things we think it's my business but it affects all the others and I think with the key for better togetherness and better collaboration is to be curious curious, curious and letting other know what you do not to and to be transparent so curious and transparent I think those words are important yeah thank you Thanks. well I can just say Nicholas that is the IKEA concept. That's why IKEA can have the prices that they have. And from our long um, collaboration with IKEA, we know that this is something that you need to work across the disciplines. And if we can give that different, um, you can say, mindset to our students, when they come out, they can also help inspire from, from other types of businesses. Yeah, you need good ambassadors for that because it's yes. not the way it's done in the construction industry traditionally. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they differ, so that's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting comparison at least. Uh, I'd like to move on to another aspect uh, that is smart housing uh, has as a DNA or, or the core and it's down to innovation. Um, and uh, it, I would say personally that, that my impression of the previous uh, housing fairs have been quite much of showing off standard products in a, with a new uh, setup or, 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 or more from the basic production, uh, more or less, uh, might not sound that... that uh, 
positive maybe, but, but that personally. But the ambition in this new setup is to adding more of innovation and this wider perspective looking a little bit outside the building on top of, of everything else that you expect in, in a housing affair, I would say. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, thinking of uh, and addressing Anshalot, uh, aspects like uh, living labs or test beds, etc. Uh, what's the uh, academia researcher aspect of fair and test beds, etc.? Well, we like that concept because that gives us the opportunity of coming out and talking to people who, who actually are testing out uh, equipment. Uh, I'd like to take a step back because when we started Smart Housing, that was one of the things that was very heavily discussed. What is smart in smart housing? Is it a smart home? Is it a smart gadgets? Is it a smart production? And the perception is that it has to be all of it. But is it the, uh, the windows that clean themselves or the walls that you can change with inside your building? Or is it the fact that you can keep the costs down at a, at a uh, um, you could say, better sustainable house? It's all of those. But you need to know what you want to show and what is the innovation. Innovation is something that people are prepared to pay money for. Thank you. Uh, Linda, what, what's your, uh, uh, how would you like to, to cooperate within innovation with a university like uh, Linnaeus? I think the university has a much longer time perspective than we in the corporate world have. Uh, they can look, like when Anshalot says, I want to look into the future. Her future is so far away. My future is like half a year away. Mm -hmm. So, and that, of course, that gives different uh, input to the process. Mm -hmm. And I think that is important. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. Niklas, uh, what's your take on when I say living labs and test beds, etc.? What's, what's your thoughts? They're an important uh, part. I think also you, one should remember that, I mean, a couple of favorite uh, sayings. Uh, the light bulb wasn't dis invented through continuous improvements of candle lights. Exactly. I think that's mm. also true, which sort of would stand in contrast with, with uh, test labs and pilots. But it needs to be done. Uh, but sometimes it's also a, a leap of faith. You don't practice leap across the canyon before you make your go. You need to go fully the first time you do. So it's both. And but, it's but a in, conservative yeah. market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the question is who is the most conservative? The people who live in the house or those who are buying it or those who are building it? Let's not set mm -hmm. that contest out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And, and that, that makes me think and, and, and one of my, my maybe favorite questions could be, and I address uh, Niklas now uh, primarily, how could this kind of fair uh, related to your industry be a tool for creating attractive neighborhoods? Uh, was the, the, this combination of innovation and the final big picture of, 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 of this kind of neighborhood? Well, on the neighborhood perspective, it's, uh, it's not so much down to the producers, then we would look to the developers rather. Uh, and you really need to sort of get in tune, I think it's been touched on before, but you need to get in tune with the presumed resident. Uh, it is presumptuous for anyone to think that I know what you want. What, what would be attractive to you, Magnus? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I can guess, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so that is a key question to, to make the neighborhood attractive. Uh, what can each producer's, uh, producer commit to, well, they can commit to uh, making those details correct, making every little thing that actually adds on to the experience of li living there. It's, it's uh, I mean, everyone contributes in their ways, but it, they are very different. Uh, Thank you. And, and Angelot, what, what's your reflection on what just Niklas just said? Yes. This kind of dialogues is a new way of working and I think that one of the restrictions or we can say one of the hindrances that we have felt during the time working in smart housing is that taking into the context of the, the end user, there are so many layers mm. when we come to Linda's um, architectural experiences and, and that balance 
because you need to work in that chain. And even though we, you are perhaps involving end user perspectives, that might not be the people who end up living in your, your building. Because if it's, a, if it's a, you say, residential building where you rent your apartment, I mean, you get assigned to it. And if it's something that you build for somebody to purchase, well, those that you involve might not be the ones ending up purchasing uh, an apartment. If you are talking about a, um, you could say, a one family house, that is much closer together because then it's the end user who makes the contract with a buyer, uh, with with seller. I guess the, the problem would be larger if there was no one buying, because that would mean no one likes it. If there are exactly. other mm -hmm. people than mm -hmm. the anticipated ones mm -hmm. buying it, mm -hmm. it only means we struck broader on, on, mm -hmm. on attractiveness or beauty mm -hmm. or whichever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Linda, your reflection on, on, on what we've just heard here. Uh, that. Uh, in the beginning, it has to be uh, the right ambitions for the fair or for the area so that we know what is it that we aim for. Uh, I mean, if we say we can guess, but what is the aim, what is the ambition? And, and I, I also think that is important when to get producers, architects, developers, uh, municipalities. They have to put in money. Mm -hmm. They have to put in money and they, everyone likes when it's a good ambition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the good, what is a good ambition will, will change over time. Mm -hmm. um, but that is important. So strong visions. Strong visions mm -hmm. is really important. Good. And that gives us uh, the, the, the f helps us over to the last part of, of our uh, dialogue here. And uh, it's the case where we need to uh, conclude uh, what we take uh, with us from this discussion here uh, and back home to our colleagues and so forth. And uh, uh, maybe we, we start with Anshalot and see what's, what's your take after this discussion. Well, it's great to have this opportunity of meeting and, and also discussing outside of uh, our normal roles where we meet. Uh, we are proud to be a partner also in the new European Bauhaus initiative. And we work very much on the European um, Union and with European universities. And we hope that that is going to also help bring uh, an international context to the housing fair discussion. Uh, our vision in Linnaeus University is we set knowledge in motion for a sustainable future development. And this is the key for us, together with all of our students, our researchers and our teachers, to work together with all our partners to create that sustainable future. Perfect. Thank you very much. Linda, what's your final conclusions? I think this has been a really interesting discussion. and. Uh, the discussion about fairs and not having fairs in the bigger cities, but out maybe in the countryside even, it's very interesting to give another option for people. Maybe you can have a career even if you live in the countryside. Maybe you can have a really modern life, an active life, even if you don't live in one of our bigger cities. I think that is a very interesting question and uh, still to be answered of. That's a good cliffhanger. Thank you very much, Linda. Niklas, what's your conclusion? I'm thinking a little bit about uh, what Linda was speaking about, uh, about being curious. I think that's uh, a key element for every improvement, uh, whichever it may be. And uh, I mean, innovation being sort of the theme for the week, this puts the finger on something that I much like. Uh, it's needed in order to, to, to do things. Also getting a reference point on that maybe we are actually doing quite a lot of progress, uh, which, uh, do, you know, doing daily work, putting your head down, doing the hard work because it's, it's hard as well. It's good to be reminded at times. Uh, and the mindset, I, I think it's, it can't be emphasized enough. If you decide that something is not doable, if you decide that it's going to be more expensive if you decide whichever mm. that is how it's going to be but you can also decide the other way mm -hmm. so let's do that mm. 
Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thanks for all of you, Niklas Andersson, Linda Kamara, and Charlotte Larsson, for being part of this uh, dialogue here and uh, uh, putting the, 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 the target on some very important aspects connected to innovation and the new European Bauhaus and this upcoming new fair. So thanks so much for being a part of uh, listening to us today and we'll see you soon together. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you.